And we're rolling. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Welcome back to Tasty Business. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to absolutely fucking nail a cheeseburger. We're gonna make milk buns, beautiful burger sauce, we're gonna mince our own beef and cheesy melted goodness on top. It's like going to your favorite burger joint. Uh, it's proper American style, smash burgers. Let's do it. First up, making the milk buns. I'm gonna be doing this by hand, just cause it's, I mean, it's a lot more accessible. Probably prefer to do it in the KitchenAid if I'm honest, but. Um, I'm gonna make it by hand so you guys can see, see how to make it. First that's strong flour, sugar, instant dried yeast. I need 10 grams. So you can give that a good mix and disperse all of the yeast. I'm going straight in with salt, um, but because the yeast well, well dispersed, it's not gonna affect the, uh, the yeast rising. Mix that all together. Now we've got milk in with the egg and you can just give that a good mix. This is what's gonna hydrate your flour. Just pour that in. It's gonna fold in the flour into the milk so it all becomes one well hydrated mass. The next thing is, is just to turn that out onto the work surface and we'll just start kneading it. We're gonna have to knead it for about five minutes. Push away with your hand, pull back, push. Pull back, push, pull back. Good to have a bench scraper just to lift it all off the surface because it is very sticky dough to work with at first. And then once you've worked it a bit, it becomes less, less sticky. But it looks wet, but we haven't activated the gluten yet. You can already see it's like getting stronger. There's more structure to it already. You can see it's like smoothing out. Yeah, it feels wet. You just gotta keep going. Do you see that initially when I go? It's just like, it's sort of like trying to come back with the rest of the dough. Okay, so after mixing for about five minutes, it's definitely different to how it was before. And now we've got to get the butter in there. So you want nice room temperature, soft butter. So see that's nice and soft. To get the butter in there, what you want to do is just fold it in and then fold the dough over. So you kind of locked it in. And now you can start really start to work that butter and just push it in with your fingers. You can already feel that. Well, I can already feel the butter getting inside the inside the dough. You don't want to work it so it's really well incorporated. Now we're almost getting to the stage where it's pretty much at the stage where we can put it in for, it's mixed enough, it's all one smooth dough. Now we're gonna put it in into the fridge to, to prove it. You need like a, a plastic container or something like that. I've just lightly oiled this so the bread is gonna prove in the fridge for a couple of hours. Especially when you're making uh, enriched doughs, so that, like with butter and stuff like that, it's normally wise to chill them down because the dough is is butter, and when butter's at room temperature, it's very soft and malleable. Whereas this, this you want it slightly firmer to be able to shape it nicely. Lid on, and that goes in the fridge for at least a couple of hours. Now we'll just get working on uh, the fillings for the burger. First up, I'm gonna make uh, crispy shallots. We're gonna slice the shallots very thin and just toss it in corn flour and then fry it from cold oil to hot oil until we get a nice brown, very crispy shallot. So this is just gonna add lovely texture in the burger. It's all about texture, the flavor really. Slice it thin. Do love a crispy shallot, it's good. It's just fucking good. <laughs> okay, so you got the shallots cut nice and thin, and then we're just gonna get some corn flour, about half a tablespoon of corn flour, just enough to coat it, really. And just make sure you break them all up with your hands so you get, they're all individual pieces. So from that, we're gonna go into the oil. Prep work before you start frying, uh, sieve and a bowl so we can pour out the cook shallots because what we don't want them to do is brown and not be able to take them out fast enough. Oil's on, medium heat. I'll just put it on just before. Um, it's not it's not too hot. So we're gonna get all those shallots in there. Because, because we're cooking from cold, we're gonna make sure the 
all the um, moisture has come out of the shallots before they get crispy. See now this, these are getting nice and nicely coloured. You don't want them much darker than that. And then you can just... Strain them off. Don't want to burn shallot, do we? Put these... Spread them out. And then give them a little season with some... A little bit of fine salt. That'll be your crispy shallots. And we'll keep those till we're ready. For the sauce, we're going one shallot. So it's basically a mix of raw shallot, ketchup, mustard, hot sauce, and then uh, some mayonnaise and some sweet pickle relish. I'm just gonna finely dice these shallots. I mean, it's like, a, it's basically a, a rip off Big Mac sauce. Done in the best way possible. We've got a bit of sweet pickle relish, and then, Get a, get a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise. Then we go in with this yellow mustard. And then you trust the old Heinz. That's adding the sweetness, the mayo's adding the richness, the onion's adding that raw sort of like feel. So that's your sauce there. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of fermented Scotch bonnet. Hot sauce, raw. Um, it just gives, you know, just gives that burger a little bit of spiciness. That's gonna go top and bottom of the bun. Okay, sauce done. Oh, um, that is tasty. Milk buns. They've been in the fridge for just a couple of hours. Doubled in size in the fridge. And just by being cold, it's gonna be a bit easier to work with. Um, so what we're gonna do is just weigh out, weigh out the dough. And we want 90 gram balls. So you weighed out all the dough. Now we just need to shape it. Line the tray with baking parchment. And if you just put a little bit of oil on the bottom of the tray, it just means the baking parchment will stay stuck down. To shape the dough, you just want to form this like cupping motion with your hand and just roll it into a nice ball. What you're doing here is creating tension over the surface. And it should be nice and smooth all the way around. They want to be a decent width apart, a few inches apart maybe. They're going to prove to a certain size and then they're going to bake. They're probably going to three times in size at least. So just cover it. I've just got a tray here. Slot that on top and then we'll just leave that to prove until at least doubled in size. The rest of the garnish, pickles, nice butthead lettuce and tomato. Tomato and lettuce in a burger, I mean, it can be fantastic, but it can also be shocking. You know, if you're using a shit lettuce and some crunchy, fluffy tomato from the supermarket in December, you want to use this in the summer. This is an Italian Cure del Vesuvio, and it's summer. So it's going to add that nice, juicy, fresh deliciousness. This butthead is lovely. It's gonna fill that whole base of the bun. So you've got the lovely tomatoes, pickles, butthead lettuce, crispy shallots, red Leicester cheese, pre-sliced, great color, lovely flavor, and then the burger sauce. God, I'm hungry. The only thing left now to do is just the patty and the bun. That's not promotion for patty and bun. The milk buns have been proving for about an hour and a half. And they are ready. Let's see what's inside. Wow. So with these buns, uh, they need to be baked at 170 degrees. Uh, they're gonna take about 15 minutes and we need to brush them with egg wash. Crack one egg. An egg wash is just gonna give us a really nice shine on the bun. Um, so uh, Peggy, stop that. Peggy. Bloody dog. And then if you've got a uh, pastry brush, so you just want to brush over the top and then we can brush around the side after. When you're baking these uh, buns, you want the fan off on the oven. Fan off. I repeat, fan off. That's a baking stone.
Oh, big, big. For the patty, I've got this lovely rib cap. So I took that off the, the beef rib we did. It's from a nice Galician dairy cow. You can see it's really fatty. It's probably like at least 30% fat we're going to be mincing in this burger. We want something that's going to be juicy. And if you're going to the butcher, ask for at least 30% fat. I think like a great cut is either this rib cap or a bit of brisket and chuck minced together. Because we're cooking this American style, we're gonna smash it. So it's gonna, if you just use lean meat, it would just become like quite dry. So I'm gonna run this through the mincer. So to do that, I'm just gonna take it into strips. I can actually pass it through the machine. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have a mincer, um, yeah, just get it, from the, get it from the butcher. We got all that in strips. And we're just literally gonna pass it through the mincer. Turn it on, a bit noisy. I always find as well, when it's freshly minced and it's not, you know, it just looks so much better. So now I'm just gonna season that up. So put it into a bowl. Seasoning is literally going to be salt and pepper. We want, we want to be able to, we've got so many other flavors going on. So again, quite a good pinch of salt. And a good, good grinding of black pepper. Then we can just mix that with our hands. See how nice and fatty that is. Not your normal patty mix. We have the mix. I'm just going for a 170, 170 gram patty. You can either make them into balls. I quite like putting them in a, in a ring, They're almost like a puck, hockey puck. So before we cook the patties, it's good to cut like a square of parchment paper to go on top of the patty for when we smash it. So just take the, so we can just place that on top of the patty before we smash it. Mise en place, my friends. So that's the patties done. Where's my bun? Oh shit, bun. Right, so I think the time is up. They have been in for 25 minutes. Time to have a look at them. Oh, shiny buns. Soft, nice color on the bottom. Even, even color all the way around. That is your buns done. Okay, so because we're doing a smashed burger, we need something to press it down with. So we've got um, spatula, the rolling pin. Get your pan nice and hot. Uh, we're just gonna toast the buns nicely. Really important to toast the bun because if it's not toasted, all the sauce is just gonna run through it quite quickly. So we're gonna toast it on both sides, so nice, nice toast like that. Flip it around. Okay. And we will now cook the burger. Pan, smoking hot. Nice amount of rapeseed oil. Choose your puff of choice. Smash that right in the middle. Okay, so now, put the paper on top. Yeah, we're just gonna give it a good smash down, so. I, I like to have a burger that's, uh, you know, at least as big, if not bigger than the bun that it's going in. But you never want a burger that's smaller than the bun that's going in. I think that looks terrible. So yeah, we're just gonna give it a nice color and then we're gonna give it a flip, okay? So once we flip it, oh, hello. Now it's all going nicely there. Put, apply a couple of the pieces of cheese on. Then you can, then you put the lid on. It's going to crisp on the bottom whilst always melt, also melting the cheese on the top. It's a win-win. It's been about 30 seconds. We can turn that heat off and just let that cheese finish melting. Just bring the bun over here to assemble. Here we go. Do the big cheesy reveal. Oof. You've even got a few crispy little bits of cheese on the side. Okay, let's just lift that out. Oh, look at that. Okay, so now building the burger. And we're going burger sauce on the top as well. Then on the bottom, pickles. I like a good covering of pickles. Nice bit of lettuce. Couple of tomatoes in there, and then the patty. 
finally, some crispy onions on top. And give it a good smush down. That there is Tommy Tucker's burger. Fuck, he looks all right, doesn't he? That's tasty business. So you can either cut it in half or you can just pick it up and smash into it. Oh, look. Mm. Well, there's no pretty way to eat this, is there? Don't eat it with a knife and fork, please. I think that's the best one I've ever made. I mean, it may be long and fiddly, but trust me, it delivers in flavor and you won't want to eat another burger. Don't just go and chuck a shit burger on the barbecue and chuck it in a bun that you don't know where it's from. Do yourself a favor, make it. It's tasty business. Mmm.